session discussions. And if you don't mind, I'll start uh, with uh, group number one, uh, funders and data policy. And in our group, we had uh, basically two types of people, uh, research funders and also people supporting uh, data and research infrastructures in the countries. And uh, there was an interest from uh, Danish Research Council uh, in uh, introducing open data policy and reusing uh, some of uh, the wordings uh, that Mark uh, presented today. Uh, then um, uh, there was a comment from uh, Research Data Storage Infrastructure in Australia about data value checklist, something that would be really interesting to look at because uh, uh, what they did in Australia, they come up with uh, their requirements from uh, disciplines, from discipline communities, and uh, they sort of check uh, whether they as service provider can uh, met all these requirements. So that would be interesting to compare Australian data value checklist and UK data value checklist. Uh, then there was a comment uh, uh, that uh, it's really cheaper to keep uh, data than to try to recreate them, because sometimes uh, it's really more expensive to recreate data. Uh, there was a question from Nordic Council of Ministers. Uh, um, if you have a situation when uh, uh, some data were generated from research-funded project, plus there were some data sets brought by research, like external da data sets. Then can you require uh, open availability of that part of data set that was brought in the project? And it's really the answer is that uh, you should probably approach this case by case. In general, why would researcher try to find, uh, to tr try, try to hide someone if he or she is good, then he or she should be happy to share. But there is a question whether it's only access or reuse only. So in this case, uh, case by case uh, negotiation should go. And then uh, if uh, research uh, projects have been funded by multiple funders, then uh, whether data policy of one funder would be applied. And recommendation was to have this data policy that would be applied to research funded in whole or in a part, because that's the best approach. Uh, Mark mentioned that uh, CoData is preparing a toolkit for the funders, how funders can c come up with uh, open data policy. So I think that would be really useful resource. Uh, uh, then there was a comment from uh, UK Repository Net. Uh, uh, what, what is the role for institutional repositories in this whole data process? And also it's somehow related to a comment and question from Spanish Foundation for Science and Technology, for Science and Technology, and um, it looks like uh, institutional repositories uh, will be good places to uh, handle some uh, uh, data related to certain experiment, for example, or to certain publication. But speaking about data pools, like really data sets uh, that were created by pooling data from different sources. It's probably something that only data centers can do because that's kind of added value of data centers. And uh, for institutional repositories, it's very important to have uh, uh, clear and proper metadata information. So if some, if some data are deposited in repositories, they should be really well documented because uh, uh, they, they, the goal is uh, to have them reused later and you need proper documentation. Uh, then there was a question from uh, Swedish National uh, Data Service. Uh, how do you handle data management plans after the project? So if there was no data management plan uh, and the project is over. And uh, possibly if uh, data has some value and there is a risk of loss of data, then maybe uh, data management plans could be funded post uh, project. But in general, it should be still institutional responsibility. Institu institutions should have internal audit, uh, what data sets are available, how they are managed. Uh, um, then um, we had discussion about identifiers that, you know, it's again, related to data in repositories or in data centers that uh, 
it would be good to have researchers identifiers, then uh, it would be good if researchers would acknowledge funding sources. It's kind of common in the US to acknowledge your fund. Uh, it's not so common in Europe and it would be good to introduce this good practice. And then when you have research identifiers, you have those award identifiers, you have DOIs, then you can pull together uh, projects, information, publications and data. And there was a comment from University of Botswana, uh, whether, because we, we were talking about some national data management plans, whether there might be some uh, international approaches to data ma management plans in certain areas, and there might be some opportunities in this. Thank you. And I'm passing over to Inger. Okay. Um, so we talked about institutional policies and uh, we saw that in most institutions there is not yet uh, a policy and not even a, the project of getting a, a policy because it's not easy to do. Um, now what I especially got out of the session that we had is um, many institutions ask themselves what are the steps that we have to do before getting such a uh, data management policy. Um, so. Uh, First of all, be aware of the hierarchy. Who do you have to involve? Uh, who do you need to talk to to get everyone in this and, and to, uh, to want to, to join the project and be happy to do so? Um, so be aware of the hierarchy. Identify academic champions, not uh, people really just focusing on their one niche um, um, subject but more academic champions in uh, reaching out uh, throughout different disciplines different sorts of material so that if you work with such champions you get a broad overview of what are the needs of researchers because that's something that you have to take with you what are the needs of the researchers uh, try to get into their processes so that it's not an extra administrative burden uh, that's something that you have to take with you uh, in your mind in, in the development of such a data management plan. Be sure not to contradict other policies. Uh, it has been said before, so uh, be careful about that. So identify which policies are in place in your country in most used uh, funders uh, that your researchers uh, engage with so that you know what the policies are there. Um, certainly align what happens uh, in, uh, align with what happens in other external uh, repositories because it was also identified as a problem that many smaller institutions and even rather big institutions don't have the ability, don't have the infrastructure, the money, the budgets uh, to get into a big data management infrastructure. Uh, so to keep all your uh, data uh, safe uh, and everything. But what you can do is develop a data management plan that guides researchers uh, throughout the process of uh, research, failing, redoing things and data to keep in an archive, in, in an infrastructure, so that you can at least guide them and give uh, procedures and advice, and things like that. Uh, also, um, what do they have to uh, deposit in that repository? What do they have to keep? Um, it has been said before, a checklist is needed, uh, a basic checklist. Uh, what is the data that we have to keep? Uh, what do you mean with primary research data? Uh, so that is uh, uh, certainly important. Those were a, a few of the, of the key things uh, we talked about. Uh, if I look at it from an open air, open air plus uh, view, uh, how can we help uh, people, how can we help institutions to develop such a management plan, the data management plan, because that is what we want to do, uh, is um, uh, help uh, or uh, engage in, in the projects, in, in the uh, talks, discussions about putting up such a checklist and, and try to uh, get in, uh, uh, help with that. Uh, that's what I want to say. <laughs> uh, also guidelines and developing policies. I already mentioned some things, but if we can make uh, a sort of guide to develop uh, management, a data management policy so that you can see uh, what happens in other institutions, what are the things that we have to look at. Um, 
Also, uh, if you want to do a survey in advance, what kind of questions uh, do you need to ask? Uh, what do you want to know before starting such a, a management plan? So we do have a few things in Open Air Plus uh, that we can do to help institutions get into such a data management uh, policy. And uh, so that is something that we can do. So that is what I get back uh, from, uh, take with me from uh, this talk, this breakout group. So I, I will report back from group three. Researchers and publishers, we started off with the two questions. Uh, do researchers want to share? Is data publication a reality? And um, all, all over the discussion, typically the examples you, uh, you get to the table are from life sciences or uh, environmental sciences. And overall, there's a recognized need for, for further cases uh, in the other, other other fields where you can demonstrate the value of things and we touched um, several uh, questions in this uh, in this field like uh, in a typical experience could be of a researcher that uh, he or she does not felt acknowledged for the the effort which has been put into the collection of data it's it's then at a later stage where people are get acknowledged that like the you have the methods, you have the tools, and these people are cited, but the others are not cited. So this is then something which is a practice, which is, of course, uh, a bad thing and is, uh, is a hindrance uh, in between sharing. So a question which was, um, we, we discussed, um, say, quality issues like peer review, what kind of principles, I mean, this is something which is emerging, which is not there yet, under which kind of uh, principles you should mm, proceed when you peer review research data. So it, it's typically the ones who use the data, which are candidates for reviewing the data. And um, there are then various de degrees of openness, how, how you handle the, the, the peer review, and of course, how, how you handle the, the, the sharing of data, which we touched already in the in the talks, and and one discussion, a uh, longer discussion, was about uh, what makes researchers nervous about sharing data. What are the issues on their side? It's it's typically, of course, uh, quality assurance, quality issues, and um, well, the point of promotion, acknowledgement of their of their work, and then about. Um, I mean, they're not always confident about the value of their data. They, they have, some have the attitude like, well, my data is not good enough for sharing or whatever. And we felt it is, well, it would be good to endorse this principle and give them more confidence in this, this area and leave it then to the, to the field, uh, what, is, what is done with the with research data when shared. So overall, we, we should aim for, uh, changing the habits of researchers such that um, sharing is not something which happens at the beginning of the project and at the end, but it should be a process which you touch uh, on a daily basis, like do it five minutes and things are easy. <laughs> so, yeah, and publishers also have a role in this area, like they can help to in enforcing standards. We had um, Theodora from PLOS in our group, which who shared some experiences also like when it comes to quality it's important that you have have the original say when it comes for example pictures you some researchers use them but you well then you go back do they still have the original part the original data yeah and um, uh, one one of the last points was um, about data citation it not, should not be the only thing we are looking at, also alternative matrix, which are not there because there's not so much a critical mass of, of, of these kind of things. But like for publications, this is of course something which we um, should look at. So one, one point of summary, like I already mentioned, is like aim for 
key, key exa I mean, aim for good examples which, which can be used in this um, field to, um, to educate researchers and, the, and, and push, push things. And also a, a list of trusted um, databases where, where to share data is something which is an um, obvious need. <laughs> so that's it, what I can... If there's anything else from the group, please. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I'm presenting the results of um, the, the discussion that we have of the technical on the technical discussion. The, we were a small group of people of uh, six people. Uh, I think just one outside of the open air uh, consortium. Uh, the other ones are already people that are already involved. But it was uh, 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 interesting to to uh, to know about from exactly from that that person that is not currently working on on open air about an initiative in Finland of uh, constructing a national data catalog that will uh, collect uh, uh, research data from all disciplines and it will have uh, 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 a mix of uh, metadata only records and metadata and data and data sets and of course we immediately and Paul immediately start thinking that we could use that for for harvesting and for connecting to 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 uh, finish uh, uh, data sets then we uh, we we have a, a small discussion on uh, and a change of ideas on on the data on the open air uh, data model and especially we have we spent some time uh, 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 talking about uh, the the fact that uh, on the data model and services of open air we uh, we uh, are using uh, uh, um, trust levels for for entities and and for relations and that th those trust levels can be used uh, not only for the automatic relations that so the relations that can be established by uh, uh, by our computational uh, methods but also for man-made uh, relations as Arian uh, pointed out on on his presentation on NS publication that in some cases we will have uh, man-made uh, uh, relations and uh, uh, the data model of open air can also uh, use that uh, levels of trust to to apply to 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 that and uh, and also, and, and then we discussed the, the, the issue of the need for of, of uh, guarantee or at least having information about the long-term preservation and long-term availability of data sets and other objects on enhanced publications. For enhanced publications to be trustable, we need to, 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 uh, uh, to be sure, for, uh, uh, for, uh, hopefully, to be sure that all the, the components are, are uh, will be there in, in five years or ten years or 100 years, or at least to be to to know what parts of the of the of that uh, NS publication will be uh, will will have a long life and eventually what parts will probably have a shorter life, and so we th we we also talk about that we can also use kind of levels of trust for that, and from from those levels of trust we can then develop services at uh, user interface level so we can show uh, users what kind of relation and what kind of uh, of uh, 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 preservation uh, uh, it's associated with uh, that object and also we can for instance develop some automatic uh, uh, services for instance for low uh, uh, trust preservation uh, objects we can then uh, periodically send our uh, robots to check if the, the object is still available and if not just drop it from from the relations with the, with the publication so uh, i think that's the the, the main uh, issues that uh, we have discussed it i don't know if arian or paulo uh, want to add something else okay you
Right. Um, in two minutes, we had a very small group, um, and a lot of what's just been said, um, I'm not going to repeat because we covered quite a lot of, of those points. Um, in terms of what relates to Open Air Plus, uh, there was a question about metadata and whether or not there were licensing restrictions for the metadata itself, not just for um, databases. So we, we may need to think about that. Um, also, technically, how we're going to link um, uh, we should get sort of the case studies with our scientific communities out there um, uh, published as, as soon as possible in terms of how we're linking, going to link up f from our information space to, to external data sets and databases. Um, I think that uh, there were two researcher issues flagged up that the credit for researchers should be really um, made very clear in terms of sharing data and usability was really, really crucial. Uh, the role of the library and the sort of inertia that comes from the library sector and fear perhaps of launching into sort of the data management world um, was perhaps a reason why libraries don't have data management policies. Perhaps they're not best suited um, and that needs to be tackled. And also universities are fairly difficult places. They're very disparate with different um, units and divisions and there are po there's a lot of politics going on. So uh, one, one person said that it's quite hard uh, politically to to put forward a data management policy that everybody agrees on. Um, and that's really, the, those are the main points that, that we went through because there are lots of in-between discussions, but as we're running out of time, those are the points I'd like to tell you. So I think I'd like to bring the um, workshop to a close. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the, th thank the speakers very much because I think that they were all excellent, really good level of, of talks and a really good range. Thank you for all of your participation in these breakout groups. Please go and enjoy a nice lunch. I'd like to also thank the Open Air team because this has all been a team effort to pull this off today. So thank you all very much. And last but not le least, Nordbib as well. I hope that this has stimulated some interest within your regions. For the Open Air Partners, you could go back and start to discuss about data management policies, how you might start thinking about preparing one yourselves. At the very least, I hope this has interested you in this topic. Thank you very much, and um, enjoy the afternoon. <laughs>